I don't really like his winning chances here. Without the ability to create past pawns, I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, without the ability to create past pawn, I think now white is in trouble, basically. And trading rooks helps me. So... I think he had a good game, but maybe misplayed it a little bit. This is a good practical move, though. He wants to keep uh, keep the pieces on the board. Now, in fact, I expect him to take on e5 and avoid getting mated. My idea is pawn takes e5, and um, I don't want to take that guy on c4 he'll win tactically if I do that so where to put my queen in this kind of position don't really know I think I can afford to lose a pawn on e5 it's probably gonna be like drawn even if I'm a pawn down The knight is just too strong. Okay, this move is, is probably good. Blocks the D file. It's hard for me to make progress, but I don't think he can really make progress either. Having a weird deja vu feeling about this game. Like I've already played it before or something. You guys, do you guys ever get that kind of feeling? He's just going to come back to. He's going to go to e3, but I can take on c3. He has to be careful here because I've got my rook on the seventh guarding everything. Yeah, it's a draw. Uh, good game. Let's try to play again. This is good. Good training for you guys to watch. We don't get a lot of strong players on Lee Chess, so it's good to um, good to play another title player. I don't really remember his repertoire. Modern defense. Yeah, I'm I'm in Budapest. Where are you, dude? Where are you in Australia? How long, dude? Um, I've been living here, have my own place since 2010. You guys are just watching while we have friendly chatter here. Um, H3 and New South Wales. Wow, I didn't realize that. Nobody ever mentioned that for some reason. Um, never really thought about the fact that Totandresh sort of disappeared. I imagine he just like stopped playing chess or something. So he has a family there. That's cool. Okay, well, that's good luck, man. Um, Okay, modern defense. You like the Budapest Gambit? No, I mean, I don't think that Hungarians ever really played the Budapest Gambit, guys. It just was made famous by some tournament, being played in some tournament here. Um, life is good in Australia. Yeah, I, I want to move back to America, but it's just not that easy to move your whole life to another continent. I know there's a lot of Hungarians that have moved to Australia, though. Knight c6 is is a flexible move. Interesting. Interesting and flexible move. Yeah, I have an old book on the Peerts I was studying, and I think this line is mentioned in there. 
White can't be too ambitious after the move h3, basically. It's not a lot going on here. I can try to avoid trading queens, but maybe bishop c4 now. Trying to improve improve the position of my bishop. I guess he could try knight h5. And a4 I have to take care with. I'm not really sure. This is a very um, concrete position, I think, and he's gonna go, he's gonna go b5 now. So I think I have to stop it. I have to watch out for things like bishop f8, bishop b4, for example. Um, So you guys in the stream here, Budapest Gambit, he just played this move. I was just talking about this move, but I need to tie him down. Now king there. Yeah, it may it may come to the point where I'm going to have to like move my knight, and um, this is kind of Petrosian, Petrosian style. Try to avoid the worst of it. We're just going to try to avoid the worst of it here. I'm going to give up. This is an instructive moment, though. We're going to give up the the bishop and um, make sure that nothing bad happens to us, basically. To play c3. This is the idea. So Petrosian sometimes went to great lengths to get in c3. And um, here he has activity but I think white should be okay basically I think the two bishops give him a little edge but fortunately my white squared bishop is so good that his advantage remains somewhat small but in general I don't recommend what I did you know in retrospect this was too unambitious trading Queens um, but I knew when I had to play a4 that things were kind of gone wrong. Um, another draw. Okay, man, thanks for games. I'm going to play another. Um, okay. So, yeah, not much to do there. Let's try a Karo Khan. We guys, we haven't played Karo in quite a while. He's going to play, an, I guess, a Panov, which is interesting. Okay, this is good because I want to play... Um, I want to play this line, g6. This has been kind of topical line. So c takes d. The other line there is bishop g5. He plays old school, bishop c4. Actually, queen b3 is the main move. So I knew uh, I have to be careful here. Bishop g7, he can't play d5 because the bishop takes c3 check. So white doesn't really get anything here. So queen b3 and bishop g5 are much more dangerous. Um, he takes this guy, but that shouldn't be a big deal here. He's trying to kind of kill my bishop on c8, I guess. By uh, bishop a6, no. Um, what's up with bishop a6? Does he have... Does he have some way to exploit it? If I play bishop a6, wow, I don't know. Um, bishop a6, maybe he has like knight e5, queen b3, queen a3 type stuff. Oh, he wants to go knight a4, interesting. Is this some kind of known idea? Wow, I think he's just kind of making it up as he goes along. Unfortunately, I'd like to play queen d5, but after knight c5, he just kind of kills it, kills the whole idea. So I think I just have to let him, let him castle, you know. But it's no big deal. I, I can't keep the bishop on the diagonal. I have to just go back. But it's okay. Um, black is very solid here. Unfortunately, maybe, maybe it was a waste of time. I'm not sure. Now, queen d5 is interesting. Um, 
and totally standard. Unfortunately, it's a situation where sometimes your pieces fight over the same square. Um, that's more or less the case here with the d5 square. So I'm just showing here he's very positionally oriented. Um, so I would classify him as being you know, somewhat tactical. Um, knight e5, interesting move, getting rid of the knight or trying to get rid of the knight. He may well go back to um, knight d7, I mean. He may well go back to d3 and try to avoid exchanges. But I'm pretty sure that I didn't really find the best line. I should have played like more accurately. Bishop a6 was, was too optimistic. Um, it just can't be that easy. Now here we never ever want to trade bishops. That's absolutely not on the, on the table. Um, no way am I trading bishops. And that end, that leaves me with a very bad position if that happens. Bishop h6 is a handy move. He should have probably thought about queen. I don't know. Bishop f4 might have been the better way to go there. Now I prevent him from playing rook c1. My king is pretty good on f7 in some lines, so I have to watch out for tactics. And um, the Schliemann. What are you talking about? The Schilliner. Um Swing Chop was talking about opening repertoires, I guess. So bishop h6, anyway, I wanted to get the piece out. It's funny because Totandrush here is playing very similar to the way the lines go after queen b3 in the opening instead of bishop c4. He's got like the whole idea down, what we normally get um, strategically in, in the lines with um, when white plays queen b3. If, if you guys look at the board here, um, instead of bishop c4 in this position, normally queen b3, and I'm taking on c3, he's playing bishop c4, I'm bringing knight back to d5, he takes, I play e6, he takes on c6, and we get that kind of structure, the same as in the game, the same piece configuration. Now, bit queen e2, what, what are we doing here? Um, he's still got no access to the c line. Trading queens is fine with me. Maybe I'm having trouble getting my rook in the game, so a5 is a consideration. King f7 is a consideration. I don't think he's got any tactics uh, to exploit king f7. And this gives me the ability to like switch the position of my pieces, possibly, with like bishop e6, move the queen to d7, and play like bishop d5. Try to max out the uh, kind of max out the value of my bishop on d7. Maximum value bishop. Here, bishop e6. He's playing super solid. And then queen d7. This is the plan, basically. I want to transfer. I thought he was going to triple, uh, but he can't. He can't put it there. Now, which bishop do I want to trade? I guess the dark squared bishop now. So he's going to have some, some attacking potential against my king if I trade the dark squared bishop. Not sure how much, realistically, but enough, probably. I trade the white square bishop. He's got other kind of advantages. Looks like my king should be safe enough here. Not, not so, not so sure actually. A five. Let's see. I feel like our king should be able to hold it, hold it together. Play e six if I have to but I would prefer not to. We try to avoid creating any further weaknesses in our king side, basically. Um, a5 is a double-edged move. He's triple attacking f7. Doesn't seem like a problem. 
I can play a5, try to 